I got the Raspberry Pi 4 in my hands on Tech News Weekly, and I spent some time taking a first look at it. That's up next. This is Twit. Surprise, if you were like me, then you certainly did not expect that the next generation Raspberry Pi would drop so unexpectedly this week. Lucky us, it actually happened. It actually totally took me by surprise earlier this week. The Raspberry Pi 4 Model B is the first flagship level update since the Pi 3 Model B. I have it right here. In fact, well, it's inside here. Uh, and that the Pi 3 released more than three years ago. Uh, so one thing that never changes with the Pi, it, and it's kind of crazy that it doesn't, considering all the upgrades, is the price. 35 bucks gets you the computer that you see inside here. It's all that it takes for the baseline model with one gig of RAM. Uh, what's a little different this time around is that you can also choose a two gig version for $45 as well as a four gig memory version for $55. Honestly, Pi fans have been waiting patiently for a major upgrade to all of the meaningful specs. This bad boy, I believe, was worth the wait. I am going to test it out and, and check that out for sure for myself. But what I have right here, actually, the whole setup here is the Raspberry Pi 4 desktop kit. This is everything you need to turn the little Pi into a fully-fledged uh, desktop computing environment. Let's snap that, that lid on there. So you get everything that you see here. And I'll kind of pick them apart and talk about them. First, there's the Pi itself. It's hidden inside of this case here that came with the kit. The case is, like I said, included. But if you're buying the Pi a la carte, you'd end up with just the little computer that's inside. Uh, the Pi 4 is still about the size of a deck of cards. Makes it incredibly versatile and easy to hide inside your project of choice. Whatever you happen to be creating with this tiny little computer, you know, it's always really easy to hide these things wherever you, they happen to be. And they they fasten with those little, those little holes, four of them around the device. So it makes it really easy to mount them inside. The processor is now a quad-core 64-bit ARM V8. It's clocked at 1.5 gigahertz. Pi fans know that it's relatively easy and rather common to overclock depending on your application. Uh, and this architecture supports H.265 hardware video decoding, which is a very nice perk. The Pi now has, let's see if I can show this, not one, but two separate micro HDMI ports. I have one plugged in here and then a second one right next to it. Those are both capable of driving a dual 4K monitor setup at 30 frames per second each. Or the way I have it plugged in right now, it's a single cable. That's a single 4K monitor at 60 frames per second. So you can kind of determine what your needs are. You will need, however, as, as it is a micro HDMI port, you're going to need a micro HDMI to standard HDMI cable. Uh, to plug into your monitor. This kit, this desktop kit, does supply two of those cables, so that kind of makes it really easy right out of the box. Now, next to it over here, the Pi 4 draws more power than the Pi 3 before it. As such, it's now powered through a USB-C port that's right here, and the desktop kit does include the proper power brick for that. Uh, there are two USB ports. Let's see if I can flip this around for you here. There we go. There are two um, USB 3.0 ports as well as two USB 2.0 ports on the side. I'm using one of them to plug the keyboard right now. It also has a gigabit Ethernet port and uh, inside supports wireless AC for improved bandwidth and connection speed. Bluetooth also got a bump from uh, 4.2 to the latest 5.0 spec. Oh, and uh, memory transfer speeds have improved. So that's thanks to a switch from LPDDR2 to LPDDR4. Now, outside of all of that, if I flip this around, you can kind of see right underneath there, uh, you do have the micro SD card slot, which will house your system images. Still also on the side, a, uh, a standard courage port, as I like to call it, but it's really just a headphone port. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, really, it's just still the awesome little computer that it's always been. It's just made to be better and faster than ever before. And uh, also included in the desktop kit, you get this uh, keyboard that I have out on the desk here. Here, I'm going to snap that back closed here. You get this nice uh, Raspberry Pi keyboard, which will hold out for you. Uh, that plugs in via USB, of course, and then a little Raspberry Pi uh, mouse. It's a micro USB mouse that you can plug right into the keyboard. Um, and it has kind of a shortened cable, so it doesn't totally get in the way. Uh, also included in the box, I forgot to bring it in here, is the official Raspberry Pi Beginner's Guide 
to get you all excited to nerd out with your new toy. So included in the kit that I received um, and in actually that micro SD card slot is a micro SD card with noobs. It's an LXDE based desktop environment for Raspbian. Uh, so this is the desktop environment. It means that out of the box, you literally have a desktop computing environment uh, with which to get started. If you cut to the video that we have feeding in to the system, you can kind of take a look at it uh, let's see here. There it is. I'll move my mouse so you can kind of see where I'm at. But this is the desktop environment. Uh, to get started, you also have, you know, you have a, uh, let's see here, the Chromium browser, which you can open, you know, and it's, it's all set up to connect to um, our wireless internet here. But you can, you know, open up and, and browse to your heart's content is basically a Chrome browser. You also have a full file manager, as you can see here. It's kind of a basic approach for a desktop environment. And there's a whole bunch of other of other features in here. Many users are probably going to opt to flash their own favorite flavor of Linux on the device. That's kind of the beauty of this package. It's all about customizing it to your own preferences. And it's designed to make that pretty simple. It's pretty amazing what you can do with the Raspberry Pi. I love these things. So I've only just received all of this. I'm eager to put it through its paces. Uh, top of my personal list is testing out some emulation capabilities. It's really what I use most of my Raspberry Pis for, uh, most at home. The Nintendo 64 is kind of a tricky console to test out. It has been uh, with previous Pies, previous iterations. For the past few years, the emulation community has kind of been champing at the bit for improved Pi hardware uh, to possibly make it happen finally. Time's going to tell on that front. Uh, things appear to be pretty promising based on what we know right now. The main problem right now is that RetroPie isn't even ready for the Pi 4 yet. Uh, and it could honestly be a while before it is. It's going to take some time for them to create that to this hardware. But there's enough of a community there. I have faith that they're going to get right on it. So you can expect an update on that somewhere down the line once that actually happens, because that's going to be what I'm going to be doing. And by the way, I'll just get this in here real quick. This is the Raspberry Pi beginner's guide that comes in the desktop kit. The desktop kit runs around $120. So uh, it includes all of this stuff and you can uh, you can go check that out. I'm super excited about the potential of this upgrade. It's been a long time coming. I'm happy with the changes. You can head over to raspberrypi.org to read up and find links to online stores like Adafruit that are selling the new hardware now. Uh, you can check it out and hey, you know, email us, tnw at twit.tv. Let us know what you plan to use your new Pi for. I would love to hear from you to see what you're gonna put this hardware to work on. Keep up with all the hottest tech news and gadgets, visit twit.tv. There you'll be able to find and subscribe to all our tech shows. Thanks for watching, Hands on Tech.